Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our presentation. We are happy to share with you about marvelous Japanese technologies. Actually, this presentation topic is last of our presentations. So, we have two questions for you. First, did you enjoy the whole presentation so far? Yes! Second, what do you imagine? What do you imagine when you... What do you imagine? <laughs> what do you imagine when you hear about Jap Japanese technology? Robots. <laughs> Thank you. We introduced three marvelous Japanese technology. Now we'll introduce about ourselves and our presentation topics. I'm Manaka Otoguro. I will talk about the awesome Hanshin Expressway Company. I'm now Kojima. I will talk about what you need to know of Japanese medical technology. I'm Shiori Kusano. I'm introduced about innovative technology for making Japanese eyewear. You can know about the specific details of Japanese technology more deeply after listening to our presentation. Please enjoy it. Good evening again. My name is Manaka Otoguro. Tonight, I'd like to share with you about the awesome Hanshin Expressway Company. As you know, expressways, highways, and freeways are very convenient for transportation because they make your travel by car or by bus shorter. Do you know when the first expressway was built? No. no. The first expressway in the world was the Autobahn in Germany in 1933. The second was an expressway built in Southern California in 1940. However, the era of the Japanese expressway didn't start until 1969. First, I will talk about the Hanshin Expressway Company. After that, there are highway solutions for earthquakes. Finally, I will introduce their high-tech traffic control systems. Now, let's look at the Hanshin Expressway Company. This company is located in Osaka and was founded in 1962. It has, it has built 17 expressways in the Osaka Kobe area. This company, however, ex experienced one big disaster. Have you, he have, you he have you heard of the have you ever heard of the Great Hanshin Aoji earthquake? Yes. This earthquake happened on January 17, 1995. This this earthquake happened. This earthquake had a magnitude of 7.3 on the Richter scale. At that time, four bridges collapsed. Then, the Hanshin Expressway Company took about one year and nine months to reopen all expressways. Please look at these pictures. They are awful, aren't they? Next, I will talk about the two, two solutions for earthquakes. The first, the first solution was the structure change of expressways. One structure change is the reinforced bridge pier. It, it used concrete weight inside and copper plates. Then, the strength of the bridge pier improved. Another Another structure change was the base isolation structure. The Hanshin Expressway Company started using a rubber spring, which decreased the effect of earthquakes. The second solution was the special maintenance technology. 
I will focus on two maintenance systems. One system checks road damages such as rough ground and road deterioration by using a special vehicle. Another system finds underground cracks on the road using a sensor. Ne uh, now, let's move on to the traffic control system used by the Hansin Expressway Company. I will show you two kinds of traffic control systems. The first traffic control system is an information collection system. Please look at these pictures. The vehicle detectors measure traffic volume and traffic flow using ultrasonic pulses. Also, a TV camera is installed every kilometer. And a patrol car drives, ra drives around every route at least once every two hours. This, this system collects information about car accidents and car breakdowns. Another traffic control system is an information transmission system which provides the traffic information to motorists. For instance, drivers can catch the traffic information from ITS spots, some signposts on the expressways, and the radio. ITS means Intelligent Transport System. It transmits the traffic information to a car navigation system. These three systems provide information about travel time, road work, and traffic congestion. Traffic control systems provide uh, traffic control systems efficiently allow drivers to take immediate action during traffic accidents, vehicle breakdowns, or a fallen object from a vehicle on the road. In conclusion, the Hansin Expressway Company has an absolutely wonderful technology for, for improving Japanese expressways. This company has special structures and maintenance equipment to prepare for disasters, especially earthquakes. Also, their traffic control systems support your safe travel. Therefore, they are an amazing part of Japanese technology. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Next presenter is Nao. She will talk about the Japanese medical technology. Thank you, Manaka. Her presentation was really interesting, wasn't it? Yes! Good evening again. My name is Nao Kojima. I would like to talk about Japanese medical technology. Do you know about Japanese medical technology? No. Well, today I would like to tell you three remarkable points of this field. First is an amazing Japanese scientist and his achievement. And then the advantages and disadvantages of Japanese medicine. First, let's look at an amazing Japanese scientist and his achievement. The scientist is Shinya Yamanaka. Have you ever heard of his name? Yes. He is a professor at Kyoto University. Also, the most famous thing about him is that he is a Nobel Prize winner. He won the prize in 2012. Do you know why he won the Nobel Prize? No. It's because of his impressive achievement in discovering iPS cells. iPS cells stand for induced pluripotent stem cells. This means the cells are capable of giving rise to several different cell types. When stem cells were first introduced, they were introduced as a way to help to cure diseases. But the problem at that time, these stem cells were came from aborted babies. However, 
Professor Yamanaka discovered iPS cells, which came from living adult cells. So, his achievement led to a great advancement for medical science. iPS cells help to cure diseases by creating various healthy cells and are used for regenerative medicines. Also, if doctors make use of iPS cells, it's possible for them to research toxins and to conduct tests on the cells to evaluate side effects. So, it's expected that doctors can develop new medicines. Now, I would like to move on to the advantages of Japanese medicine. I've chosen two advantages that I want to share with you. The first advantage is Japanese family doctors. In general, Japanese family doctors are doctors who Japanese patient to who Japanese patients visit to consult with first when they are ill. And also, family doctors are our, a part of our communities. So it's easy for family doctors to grasp the health conditions of their patients. Now, let's compare it with American doctors. The most stunning thing is that the average fee for outpatients is quite different. According to our research, in the U.S., the average fee is about $200 per visit. On the other hand, in Japan, the average fee is about just $20 per visit. Because Japan has nationalized health care. The second advantage is the Japanese efforts at curing cancer. Cancer has been the most common cause of death in Japan since 1981. Lung cancer is the highest incident rate for men. The contributing factors are cigarettes, exhaust fumes, and a change in aging habits. Because of Japanese efforts, um, the Japan is ranked first in research which compared with the five-year survival rate of lung cancer patients from nearly 70 countries. I've talked about the advantages of Japanese medicine, but how about the disadvantages of it? I've chosen two disadvantages that we should know about. The first disadvantage is the number of doctors. Recently, the number of doctors is decreasing, especially surgeons. The main reason is that they have to work day and night and they have excessive stress. Now, let's compare with the U.S. in the number of outpatients, of, uh, of pa outpatients per, per doctor per visit. One American doctor has about 2,200 outpatients per year. On the other hand, one Japanese doctor has about 8,400 outpatients per year. The number in Japan is about four times as much as in the U.S. The second disadvantage is developing new medical technology. The amount of new medical development in Japan is lower than that of other countries, especially the United States. Uh, Japan, actually, Japan doesn't use data from past surgery to improve the future medicines. The reason is that Japanese doctors tend to focus on each surgery individually. Japan has many resources of technology which Japan should use to improve medicine more. In conclusion, Japan has an amazing Japanese scientist who has contributed to medical science, so we should be more proud of him. In addition, Japanese medical technology has two different aspects, which are advantages and disadvantages. Also, Japan must make use of them effectively to continue improving Japanese medical technology. Thank you for listening. The next, the next presenter is Shiori. Her presentation is about Japanese eyewear technology. Mm -hmm. 
Now, thank you for introducing Japanese medical technology. It's remarkable information, isn't it? Yes. yes. I'm Shio Ikusano. Today, I'd like to talk about innovative technology for making Japanese eyewear. Do you wear glasses? Yes. It's very possible your glasses were made in my home prefecture. As you know, Japan has a lot of wonderful technologies, such as medical, automotive, electronics, and robotics. Do you know the detail of eyewear technology? In Japan, especially Fukui Prefecture, is one of the three major production areas for eyewear in the world. My presentation will explain about three main topics. First is about Japanese eyewear, then the process of manufacturing, and third is advanced materials. Now, let's look at Japanese eyewear. In Japan, Fukui Prefecture is one of the three major production areas for eyewear in the, in the world, as well as Italy and China. Each country has its proud point. Japan is proud of its high-quality eyewear. Surprisingly, market sharing data shows amazing percentages, both nationwide and worldwide. About 96% of all eyewear in Japan comes from Fukui Prefecture, while about 20% of all eyewear in the world also comes from Fukui Prefecture. Can you believe it? No. It's amazing data. These great facts were from several reasons. One of the reasons is the good attitude of technicians in this area. They always have high motivation and are particular about their task. Another reason is the high skill of technicians. It's too difficult to imitate, even for smart robots. Also, Japanese eyewear production system has division of labor. This system helps technicians to focus on their part of production to create high quality eyewear. As a result, Japanese eyewear is famous in the world for its high quality. Now, let's move on the process of manufacturing. In the old days, like before developing electronics, all parts of eyewear were made by hand, even tiny screws. It's unbelievable. But now, by developing electronics, most, I, most, pro, most processes are done by machines, such as designing and cutting. These processes are so hard to do by hand, so using a machine is better. Also, Japanese eyewear has 200 to 250 processes to finish making one. So Japanese eyewear company use both machines and handmade parts skillfully. For this reason, machines can make eyewear more faster than technicians can, but technicians can make eyewear more correctly than machines. So, Japanese eyewear company use both advantages and produce eyewear efficiently. I've just told you about Japanese eyewear and the process of manufacturing. Now, I'll tell you about advanced materials. Japanese eyewear material history is very simple. About 100 years ago, most eyewear used copper and gold. However, material shifted to titanium, and now Japan is trying to develop other new materials, such as magnesium. Titanium is light and strong metal and does not often cause allergies but processing is so hard. It was too difficult to adapt as an eyewear material. However, in 1983, Japan succeeded in processing titanium for eyewear for the first time in history. Since then, titanium has been used as an eyewear material. In addition, 
Japan cultivated the skill of laser technology from titanium processing, and this skill used in medical technology. Also, Japanese eyewear company trying to develop new materials, such as magnesium. Magnesium is lightest metal and has high recycling potential. On the other hand, it can be easily affected by heat and rust easily. So it's not easy to adapt as an eyewear material. But if it succeeds, we could wear eyewear more comfortably and it also could help to develop other new technology. In conclusion, Japanese eyewear technology is amazing, don't you think so? Japanese eyewear has some interesting features, such as being famous in the world. Also, Japanese eyewear company use both machines and handmade parts skillfully and trying to develop other new materials, such as magnesium. I hope eyewear technology becomes better than now and help to develop other new technology in the future. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Shiori. We were able to learn a lot of new information about Japanese eyewear technology, right? Right. Yes. Did you enjoy our presentation? Yes. Japan has many marvelous technologies, don't you think so? Yes. We think so too. In conclusion of all our presentation, Japanese technology promotes safety for Japanese, Japanese people. And in addition, Japanese medical technology gives us high quality health. Also, Japan has skillful technicians and they always provide high quality technology for us. Technology develops every moment, so more comfortable life is, is waiting for us in the future. Thank you for listening. <laughs>